He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the Old Testament, God commanded Moses to lead the chosen people out of slavery in Egypt, to escape the armies of the wicked Pharaoh, the Israelites miraculously crossed through the Red Sea. At the command of God, Moses stretched out his staff over the water, and the sea parted to form a path of dry land that the Israelites could use to cross with towering walls of water on the left and the right. After the Israelites had passed through the Red Sea, God commanded Moses to again stretch out his staff over the sea. And the water returned as it had been before, swallowing up the Egyptians in the depths of the sea. The Israelites, who had thus escaped out of Egypt, were then in the desert, and they had no food. God had promised to lead them to the land given to their father Abraham, and God always keeps his promise. God gave the chosen people the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai to make it clear to them what they would have to do in order to be worthy to enter into the promised land. But God also provided food for the Israelites for every day of their journey. There were more than 600,000 Israelites who escaped from Egypt. But God fed them every day, not a week or two weeks, but for 40 years with miraculous bread from heaven. God took care of his people all during those 40 years even though they often complained and disobeyed and even several times wanted to go back to Egypt to be slaves again. Only two people out of all those 600,000 never did anything which would offend God. And so only two out of all those 600,000 were allowed to enter into the promised land. There is a great lesson here for us. The slavery of the Israelites in Egypt is a symbol of what life is like without the grace of God. The chosen people were miserable in Egypt, but they could do nothing to free themselves. God sent Moses to deliver them and to lead them to the promised land. God sends us, the church, to free us from the slavery of sin. The Israelites passed through the Red Sea to escape. We must pass through the saving waters of baptism to be freed from original sin. On their journey, God guided the Israelites, leading them in a pillar of fire. And so too, we must carry within us the fire of charity in order to follow God to the promised land. The Israelites were given the Ten Commandments by God, which they were to keep 
if they wished to enter the promised land. We too must keep the commandments of God and of his church if we are to enter into the promised land of heaven. The Israelites were in the desert for 40 long years, moving from place to place as God commanded them. We also are in the desert, the desert of this life in the Valley of Tears. And this is for us, as it was for the chosen people, a time of testing, testing whether we will be faithful to God or not. On our journey, we also are fed with bread from heaven. The Israelites were given the manna, which appeared every morning and fed them all during their journey to the promised land. We are given a different sort of bread from heaven. We are given our blessed Lord himself, his body, blood, soul, and divinity as the food for our souls in Holy Communion. What a beautiful thing this is, Holy Communion. Jesus loves us so much that it was not enough for him to become man or to teach us the way to heaven or to die for us upon the cross or to give us the church. Jesus gave us himself to be with us always in the tabernacle and to visit our souls when we receive him in Holy Communion. Jesus himself comes to visit us, to spend time with us, in order to show how much he loves us and how much he wishes us to be with him forever in heaven. Remember Zacchaeus in the Gospel, the little man who climbed up into a tree so that he could see our Lord when he passed by. Zacchaeus didn't care how foolish he must have looked, a grown man in all of his fine robes perched on top of a tree. How foolish he would have looked. I'm sure everyone laughed at him. But he didn't care. He wanted to see our Lord. And our Lord was so pleased by Zacchaeus that he wanted to see him, that he went to visit Zacchaeus in his own house. And that visit made Zacchaeus, who had been a dishonest man, to choose to give up his sin, to make amends to live a holy life. Our Lord says to him, this day hath salvation come to this house. Today, on this first Holy Communion day, Jesus comes, not just to visit you in your house, but into your soul. God is everywhere. But our blessed Lord, as he is man, is only in heaven, where he ascended after his resurrection, and in the Holy Eucharist. In receiving Holy Communion today, for the first time, you will be closer to Jesus than you have ever been, for he will come to stay within your heart. Our Lord promises that those who receive him in Holy Communion will have everlasting life. But this also requires that we remain faithful to God our whole life long. The Jews in the Old Testament, remember, ate the manna every day for 40 years. But God was not pleased with most of them and could not allow them to enter into the Promised Land. 
It would be a terrible tragedy if someday you were to become like the ungrateful Israelites in the Old Testament, complaining about how difficult it was to travel to the promised land, disobeying what God had told them to do, even wanting to go back to how they had lived before with the wicked Egyptians. We must fix our attention on getting to heaven as the most important thing we could ever do. We must be very careful to keep each of the commandments of God and of the church. We must never go back to living like those poor people who do not know about God. If we are faithful to God, then we shall indeed reach the promised land of heaven that our Lord promises us. As you receive our blessed Lord today in Holy Communion, ask him to remain with you always. Thank him for all that he has given you, especially for dying on the cross and for giving himself to you in Holy Communion. Never separate yourself from him by sin, and then, strengthened by the bread from heaven, you shall reach the promised land to spend all eternity with God, our Blessed Lady, and the saints in heaven. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.